morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz and here I am over in Streaky Bay with the weather forecast for you today on Tuesday the 24th of June 2025. There's a lot to get through today. That powerful storm in the Great Australian Bight is giving South Australia, Victoria, parts of New South Wales and Tasmania an absolute hiding this morning with more significant severe weather impacts expected throughout the course of today and into tomorrow morning. We'll touch on the rainfall situation up in far north Queensland and also over in southwestern Australia. All the details on the weather coming up in this video so stick around to the end if you haven't already please to consider subscribing but let's get stuck straight into things this morning. I'm not exactly sure where to start apart from the current satellite imagery and radar imagery. This is a very significant storm. As I mentioned at the start of the video I'm down in Streaky Bay in South Australia to about 110 kilometers to the southeast of Sejuna. Seldom have I been in storms stronger than what came through last night. We got an absolute hiding down there. A rainfall band came through uh, for about an hour and a half. It was just lightning, thunder, damaging wind gusts and some pretty significant rainfall accumulation as well. Unfortunately, this isn't the good news that South Australia and drought impacted Victoria and parts of New South Wales were looking for. The significant wind threat that's blowing through ahead of this front here, even though there has been some relatively healthy rainfall accumulations from this weather system, it's just blowing all of that topsoil away. And as I mentioned in my Facebook post uh, later on yesterday, we are seeing some pretty significant dust storm activity develop through New South Wales, South Australia and Victoria. And it is just truly heartbreaking to see because it is that topsoil that the farmers do so desperately need blowing off the farm at this point in time. Nonetheless, though, let's look at the forecast right now. We do have that rain band moving into New South Wales. Rainfall a little bit heavier than forecast across the southeast of New South Wales and through the Capital Territory in the region around Canberra and the Kosciuszko National Park and then down towards Canberra, uh, Captain's Flat. We are expecting some very healthy rainfall accumulations throughout the remainder of this morning and into early this afternoon. Apart from that, we do have that heavy rain band moving through and that's expected to continue to uh, uh, give uh, northern areas of New South Wales a little bit of rainfall as well. It's not actually expected to make it over the Great Dividing Range in a meaningful manner, which means rainfall is going to stop on the western leading edge of the Great Dividing Range, about as far north as about Glen Innes or Tamworth, or probably a little bit further north of Tamworth, up to around Armadale and Glen Innes. And then that rainfall will then dissipate and then redevelop again in a more significant manner into the Tasman Sea, where it's not expected to be a problem for the Australian uh, continent. So rainfall accumulations onto the east coast of New South Wales are actually not expected to be anything grand at all. The heaviest falls are going to be oh, where the system is developing right now, especially around Canberra, the Kosciuszko National Park, and then around Captain's Flat is where we're expecting the heaviest falls to be in the next couple of hours. Also, moderate to heavy falls expected north of Lithgow and Bathurst around Mudgee and Orange. We're expecting some good rainfall accumulations into this pocket here outside of the Barrington Tops, and that will extend about as far north as Cooler and Tamworth before the rainfall does become a little bit lighter. Falls are actually likely to exceed those of what the forecast models are suggesting right now. So rainfall accumulations into the New South Wales, uh, I guess, central uh, regions are not 100% polished up on my geography across interior New South Wales. So if you can lend a hand in the comment section down below, that would be much appreciated. The rainfall accumulations across much of uh, New South Wales, uh, leading edge of the Great Dividing Range, we're expecting falls between 25 to 75 millimetres and potentially heavier falls into the Kosciuszko National Park. As I highlighted yesterday, th uh, three-day rainfall accumulations, including more showers and storms coming through Wednesday and Thursday, could tip the scales towards a rainfall dump up to 125 millimetres around the Kosciuszko National Park and around Canberra and the Capital Territory, and that will be on top of whatever snowfall does come through. This is a system that is packing quite a wet punch for this part of New South Wales, and you can see it here on the radar imagery. It is looking very, very wet across this part of New South Wales, and whilst the rainfall is moving through at a pretty, pretty significant rate of knots, because it is just such a thick rain band, it's looking at rainfall accumulations here persisting for an hour and a half or even two and a half hours in some locations, and that is giving way to some very significant rainfall accumulations for some of these regions. Uh, it is quite good to see. Again, they could do with some good rainfall accumulations in these regions of New South Wales. Unfortunately, the rainfall is just not going to be enough through Victoria and Tasmania. South Australia, though, we are looking at some much healthier rainfall accumulations compared to what we have been seeing over the last couple of months. So like I said last night, a very strong storm blew through South Australia's uh, 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 air coast, I guess, up around the Streaky Bay and the Sejuna area. I'm not sure if Sejuna copped a direct hit, but I tell you right now, it's Streaky Bay. That was probably in the top 10 strongest winter storm fronts that I've seen come through, and that includes the storm fronts that come through in southwest and western Australia. It was a wild one, that's for sure. Uh, severe weather is still ongoing across coastal regions of South Australia. I'm not 100% sure why the radar and the satellite imagery isn't loading in right now. We are expecting this shower and rain
rainfall activity to continue and in fact intensify a little bit throughout the remainder of this morning and into early hours of this afternoon, especially around the Adelaide area before intensifying into the southeast coast around Robe and then down towards Mount Gambia. Showers will steadily ease off through this afternoon and into this evening across the remainder of the South Australian coastline, clearing north of Sejuna or northwest of Sejuna through tonight and into early tomorrow morning and then clearing through Sejuna and Stricky Bay through early tomorrow morning and then down towards Adelaide showers persisting through tomorrow afternoon and clearing through tomorrow evening. Plenty of showers expected to persist into New South Wales, Victoria and Tasmania. As this low pressure system gets itself into the Tasman Sea, we're expecting a vigorous southerly flow to develop and that's going to give way to some bitterly cold temperatures, showers, damaging winds, high tides, you name it. It will be severe weather central across this part of southeastern Australia. We're also expecting some very healthy snowfall accumulations as well with showers and this wintry stuff expected to persist through Wednesday into Wednesday afternoon when it will begin to ease off slowly and then finally clearing through Thursday by the looks of things or Thursday morning into early Thursday afternoon for interior parts of New South Wales and Victoria and then clearing through the coast through about late Thursday morning into early Thursday afternoon. Rainfall accumulations are going to be quite healthy as well even for Victoria and Tasmania and whilst the rainfall accumulations aren't going to be as grand as what they're going to be over the next couple of days through higher elevations of New South Wales especially around the Kosciuszko National Park we are still expecting some healthy rainfall accumulations on top of what has already fallen. Widespread falls between 25 to 50 mm is expected on the coast south of Adelaide through Robe and Mount Gambia and then down towards Warrnambool in Victoria. Falls around Melbourne expected to be around 25 to 30 millimetres of rainfall that will mostly come through tonight into tomorrow morning. Rainfall accumulations onto the west coast of Tasmania could exceed 50 millimetres in places and further falls of up to 125 millimetres are possible onto the high peaks around the Kosciuszko National Park. Again, rainfall likely to be slightly higher than what the estimates are saying right now in these major forecast models. And snowfall as well is going to be very healthy over the next couple of days. We're expecting some very good snowfall accumulations, especially through tonight and into tomorrow morning as blizzard conditions develop under those southerly winds out of the south. Where snowfall accumulations onto the high peaks could exceed half a metre in places, especially around Threadbone Parisha Valley. Snowfall accumulations are expected to be quite good indeed. Into the Victorian side of things, snowfalls between 30 to 40 centimetres expected above 1,700 metres, and then accumulations above 10 centimetres expected above about 14 or 1,500 metres at this point in time. Snowfall is expected to fall quite low, especially through tomorrow night and into early Wednesday morning, with light dustings of snow expected right down to about 300 metres across parts of Victoria. That isn't going to include everywhere in Victoria above 300 metres. That's kind of only exclusive to the mountainous regions, but we could see some healthy snowfall accumulations down to some very low elevations through Wednesday morning, uh, especially into the early hours of Wednesday morning, and some heavier than usual snow can also be expected for these lower elevations. So get out there if you can, and if you can brave the cold, rug up on Wednesday morning because it will be brutally cold. There could be some good snowfall accumulations on the ground through parts of Victoria and need I say much more for Tasmania. Some great snowfall accumulations can also be expected down there. That'll do it for southeastern Australia. Definitely a long-winded forecast update, that's for sure. Let's head up towards far north Queensland where we're going to have to change out of the snowfall forecast here, of course, and take a look at the rainfall forecast. Three-day rainfall accumulations starting on Friday are expected to continue to build up in far north Queensland. In fact, into the last couple of days of July and into the first couple of days, uh, last couple of days of June and into the first couple of days of July, a couple of showers can be expected up into far north Queensland, which could give some triple-figure rainfall accumulations here and there through Friday night and into Saturday. Saturday. Rainfall, like I said, piping up uh, on Saturday and then continuing through Saturday and into Sunday. In fact, it could be a little bit like the rainfall dub that we just had across far north and northern reaches of Queensland about a week ago, where uh, it will be, of course, much lighter across much of uh, a much wider expanse of northern Queensland. The rainfall isn't expected to be anything significant whatsoever, just a couple of drops here and there. But residual showers coming out of the southeast, especially through Sunday and into Monday, could give the Casper Coast with some healthy rainfall dumps up there. It isn't actually registering on this morning morning's forecast update, but just considering the convective activity that's still ongoing in the Coral Sea as we head out towards late June, uh, that definitely does suggest to me that if we do get that southeasterly flow pipe up across the Cape York Peninsula, especially into the Casper Coast, rainfall accumulations are expected to be quite healthy. I'm not mentioning this because there's a chance of flooding or there's significant severe weather on the way. There's really no risk at all in terms of the weather scene or the flooding scene up in far north Queensland. And hopefully that's going to remain the case for the next couple of months until we get out towards wet season 25, 26. It is just worth mentioning and always worth keeping an eye on the radar, even at this time of the year, with rainfall accumulation still expected up in far north Queensland. As we know, it does not take much to flood up there. Well, it actually does take a lot of rainfall, but it doesn't take much of that uh, tropical northern Queensland rainfall 
because I get it can get so much of it so quickly, and it can come without very uh, without much warning. So again, it's always a very good idea to keep on top of the radar imagery and the forecast modeling up there. A couple of showers moving through Mackay into the Whit Sundays today. Relatively unpleasant weather down there for this time of the year. Uh, winds aren't too uh, significant, that's for sure, which is some good news. It doesn't look like these showers are going to be moving through very fast, so the rainfall is likely to hang around for some locations across the Whit Sundays today. That'll do it for Eastern Australia. Over into the southwest, we are now finally seeing a bit of a clearing pattern. There's no rainfall into the lower west and the Perth region. We are still seeing a few showers extending between Albany down towards Esperance, but showers are few and far between. We're not expecting anything in the way of significant rainfall accumulations down there. Cool temperatures and a cool start, generally speaking, across the Wheatbelt region hasn't been as cold as what the last couple of weeks have been. So far, rainfall accumulations the month of June have been very healthy for coastal regions of Western Australia, but I don't want anybody to be getting carried away the wheat belt definitely could see some better rainfall accumulations, especially with the type of fronts that we have had. In fact, Bogart River has picked up 315 millimetres of rainfall now for the month of June, which is well above their long-term average of nearing on their all-time record of about 350 millimetres off the top of my head. Rainfall accumulations, though, out of the wheat belt have only averaged, uh, for the most part, between 10 to 15 millimetres to the north and then down to about 20 to 50 millimetres to the south and the west, which unfortunately, unfortunately is just not enough rainfall to have a bumper crop season and like some have been expecting. So let's not get carried away with the rainfall across the Wheat Belt region because there is still definitely some work to do. Rainfall is expected to stay out of the southwest until about Saturday when we are expecting a return to the rainfall and the showers. And in fact, some heavy rainfall could be expected across the south coast, unfortunately, not where the rainfall is badly needed at this point in time. Those showers will slowly creep up through Saturday and Sunday into the lower west region. In fact, building around the Perth metro area for the first week of July is looking like it's going to be a bit of a wet one at this point in time. Seven-day rainfall accumulations to start us off for July from the 1st out to the 7th is looking quite healthy across the southwest, actually. Some very good rainfall accumulations expected along the coastal regions between 80 to 120 millimetres can be expected for those regions, and falls further inland between 25 to 50 millimetres for those west of a line of about Meriden down to Bremer Bay. Rainfall accumulations, unfortunately, further out. I know that doesn't encompass much of the wheat belt, but at this point in time, isn't looking too significant, so unfortunately, they're going to have to wait a little bit longer for this rainfall. Now, this rainfall is going to be coming through in more of a kind of May weather pattern, uh, funnily enough. We do have that low pressure system developing off the coastline through the 29th out to the 30th of June. That's going to be Sunday and Monday. This one here is what we talked about yesterday. has been kind of a weird shaped system. It is expected to be quite a strong low pressure system and probably right a little bit further north than what other forecast models have been suggesting over the last couple of days. That's going to drag in some moisture from the north at west and we could even see a northwest cloud band before a proper significant strong, uh, and quite strong cold front develops through uh, the 2nd and the 3rd of June and then, uh, July rather and then that goes into the southwest of Western Australia and dare I say kind of wallops the state with some significant rainfall and potentially some strong winds as well. Rainfall will clear through Thursday and Friday the 3rd and 4th of July respectively at least for a couple of days before another weather system comes through on the 5th and the 6th and the 7th of July out there. So all in all, it looks like the next couple of days across the southwest are going to be quite dry, but then after that, at least a week or even up towards eight or nine days of wet weather can be expected across southwest WA, which could give way to some healthy rainfall accumulations to start off our July winter weather run. Certainly looking uh, quite healthy, that's for sure. Even for the coastal regions and the agricultural regions, rainfall accumulation is looking very healthy at this point in time. So I guess it is some good news, and definitely the south coast that will say yeah, yes and thank you to every drop of rainfall that comes through uh, within reason, but it definitely looks like this rainfall is going to be welcomed with open arms. In other weather news around Australia, it is high and dry across the interior parts of the Northern Territory, Queensland, South Australia and Western Australia. As you would expect for this time of the year, there's not much to talk about in the way of rainfall for those regions. And also nothing in the way of interesting tropical rain bands coming through, so there's no point in really going into detail. The weather is remaining normal for no uh, the Northern Territory, Queensland or parts of the interior Queensland, South Australia and also interior parts and tropical parts of Western Australia as we would expect for this time of the year. Just referring back to the satellite and the radar imagery, that storm system down in the Great Australian Bight looking very healthy this morning, and that definitely is going to be the main talking point weather-wise around Australia for the next couple of days. What a storm that was going through Stricky Bay last night. If I wasn't half asleep, I would have got some great photos and videos of it. It looks like those showers have really been uh, quite intense and really packed quite a punch. I haven't been able to find any rainfall observations around Stricky Bay, apart from a map that suggests 1.4 millimetres fell, and I can tell you right now, we're looking at probably about 1 to 2 millimetres of rainfall coming 
ESPN every minute at one point in Streaky Bay last night. So if anybody's got any intel on some rainfall accumulations across the Air Peninsula coastline for South Australia, be very interested. Drop it in the comment section down below. But that, on that note, that is going to be all that I have time for today. A special shout out, of course, to the channel sponsors. The names are on the screen right now. Again, I could not run the show without them. So of course, their support is much appreciated as well. That is going to do it for me today. I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.